Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Removal Sanity and today I am looking at Dungeons 3 Complete Collection. This is developed by Realmforge Studios and it is published by Calypso Media. So what is Dungeons 3? Dungeons 3 is a dungeon manager sim combined with an RTS overworld. The premise is the dungeon lord from the previous games is a bit bored with ruling the land and has decided to conquer new lands. With the help of Thalia, a dark elf priestess, you set about bringing evil to this new realm, with the help of a vast array of monsters to control. The complete collection boasts an extensive single player story, with over 50 combat missions due to the added DLC. It boasts a randomly generated levels and a co-op mode with also online skirmish. And this leads me on to the gameplay. Now I am a huge fan of Dungeon Keeper and so when I was offered to review the game that touts to be something similar I jumped at the chance. Now I've never played the previous games and thankfully due to the story which I won't spoil too much I didn't need to be. It's a standard tale of you as the ultimate evil, building up armies of monstrous creatures to conquer the forces of good whilst creating unique dungeons brimming with intricate traps. What makes Dungeon 3 unique is that it's not only dungeon building, but also real time strategy. Two very different styles which takes place simultaneously and must be switched between both on a regular basis to ensure your victory. Underground is where you'll spend most of your time creating rooms, researching and building your army before moving above ground to slay the foes around you. This usually starts out with a few basic rooms cut out of the bedrock, a dungeon heart and an exit to the ground above. Very quickly you will need a bedroom zone, a gobbler farm and one or two other initial starter rooms depending on the level. If you are all familiar with a dungeon keeper you will know exactly what to do. If not you don't have to worry as there are four tutorial guides that give you the basics of how to be evil and run a dungeon. A good chunk of the gameplay revolves around the needs and desires of your creatures, such as enough sleeping space, food supplies and being paid, whilst at the same time ensuring you have the required resources to run the other rooms. For example, the tinker who makes your traps needs to have crates which can only be acquired by a workshop room that is employed by a certain creature. For example the orc will run the tinker station but an imp will run the manor well. So understanding what each room's needs is essential to ensure your dungeon runs smoothly. For new gamers of this genre this could very well be daunting, but thankfully the game slowly introduces you to new creatures and rooms over the course of the story, so you aren't overwhelmed at any point and you always know who and what you need. To run your dungeon and gain new creatures you will need gold, and to get gold you need to dig it out of the surrounding bedrock. To do that you need minions, called little snots here, and they will be your main source for doing the grunt work of the dungeon. They dig out gold, maintain some rooms and keep things running smoothly, however they are incredibly weak and cannot defend your dungeon should it get attacked. And it will get attacked on a regular basis, so ensuring your dungeon heart is well protected is a priority, as if it falls, it's game over. To fill your dungeon with defences and build up your evil army, you will need to progress by doing research. This comes in the form of a research web, with each node being unlocked by spending the required amount of gold, mana and evilness. Each of these nodes also has a variety of upgrades which also can be purchased, like more health stroke damage for creatures or increasing the army size. 
The research web also allows you to unlock spells, with some providing damage to enemy units and others used to buff your creatures. Here is also where you unlock the variety of different traps, which vary from automated to user controlled. Basic spike pits are automatic and will injure any enemies that walk over them, whilst boulders need to be tapped for them to be released. In order to get maximum damage, I would recommend different combinations of traps and rooms enemies to use against those who dare enter your dungeon. Now, I personally found the variety of rooms in Dungeon 3's base game a little on the small side, but as each room has two to three upgrades that mostly increase their effectiveness, there is still plenty of stuff to use your resources on. However, this gets increased nicely with the complete collection, as it adds numerous more rooms and creatures to the mix. Now, once you have acquired a suitable size army, it's time to conquer the fixed isometric viewed overworld and gain that valuable resource. You do this by picking up a selection of creatures, including your main hero, and place them at the dungeon's entrance, which then they automatically go into the overworld, where the game then takes on its real-time strategy aspect. Unit selection and movement is pretty basic, and attacking is mostly automatic, with you effectively clicking on an enemy if you wish to target them. Control wise, I found that units are easy to manage, but as you progress and the unit variety expands, placing particular unit types can be a bit hectic. I found that it's actually easier just to control your whole army as a whole, as you'll be fine against any foe, as long as you have a diverse collection of units. In short terms of what you do above, it's mostly about pushing forward, attacking your enemy and taking over resource locations. Now at first, once you have gained a resource location, you can keep it forever, but as you progress through the story, the enemy will constantly try to take back said resource location. With these locations being spread out around the map, and also having constant attacks on your dungeon, Keeping a small wandering army in and out of your dungeon is essential. Every mission was superb fun, with each of them having its own gimmicks and newly introduced mechanics that shake up the gameplay as well as your strategy in a very satisfying way. This overground and underworld combination style of playing works really well and gives the game its own unique flavour that once you get used to it makes you wonder why more games aren't doing this. The complete collection gets all the expansion packs, a new skirmish map pack as well as several free content updates. This takes the base game's 20 odd missions to over 50 for the very reasonable price of £8 or $10 extra. And now to the graphics. Environments are crisp, bright and colourful and each place you go to is dynamically different from the one before. The bright colourfulness of the overworld and the equally visually stunning dark underworld works perfectly with each other. Particle effects, general creature design and animation movement all shine here and this all ties in well with the equally sparse HUD ensuring that what you see is crisp and clear. One thing that I would have liked is to have a full 360 degree view of my dungeon instead of the capped 240 degree view angle we have here. I felt it would help me in my placing of equipment easier and also allow me to view my creatures better. So what about the sound? Whilst the visuals show off the fantastic gameplay well, it's the sound that takes things to another level. Every creature has been made to be easily identifiable by its look and vocal reaction, which is perfect when in the heat of battle, but the true stars of the game are those who are doing the voice work. 
Talia, whose constant battle between her good and bad alter egos, actress shines. Equally, the narrator, who seems to be only be there to collect his paycheck and to encourage Talia to destroy as much of the world as possible, kept me in constant fits of laughter. The hilarious dialogue and references alone are something you need to hear for yourself, and I can see why this game has its fans. And this leads me on to the rating of the game. Now I rate games in order of Avoid, On Sale, Great Purchase and Must Own. My rating for Dungeons 3 Complete Collection is... A Must Own. I was truly surprised how fun and enjoyable this was, as I'm always hesitant to see how new developers take on established genres. As a new person to the Dungeons brand, this collection is perfect for those to see what they have accomplished. The game is currently priced on Xbox at £34.99 or approximately $40 and depending on your skill and patience would give you about 50 plus hours worth of gameplay to potentially clear the story and the extra DLCs. Combine this with a co-op mode, online skirmish and randomly generated levels, it's a steal at that price. If you are a Dungeon Keeper fan and want something similar that's fun and unique with tons of addictive gameplay, put this in your collection. Well ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I do hope you like this review and if you do, please like, share and subscribe if you so wish. And if you would like to put some notes or even just a comment in the comment section, I do like reading them. Anyway, have a great time gaming and I'll see you all again soon.